One way of organizing questions and tying them together in type form, and something that I've used extensively already, is piping, which means taking information from one place and piping it and like shooting it through a pipe to another place. This is what I've done with names so far, but I want to show you that there's a lot of flexibility in how piping works in type form. So I'm going to start by opening up a demonstration. I just have a blank template. You can do this however you want. I've got one here called piping. And I'm just going to show you that I've got my welcome screen. Okay, it says piping and we have no new information in there. But the first question where people are responding is your name. So let's begin with you. What's your first name? And I have this in every example I've given you. It's part of my default template. And this one is the beginning. It provides the first piece of information that we're able to pipe from responses that people give. Now I say that because there are other ways to bring in information using custom URLs that imports information. But that's a feature for the paid pro and pro plus accounts, we're dealing with what the free basic account can do. And so once people answer a question in your survey, then you can take that information, you can run with it. So let's begin by getting a little bit of short text. So we've got somebody's name, I'm going to drag this over. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask uh, for their email address, I'll paste that in I wrote it somewhere else. And as I've mentioned before, anytime I'm writing these in another program, I use the curly brackets to indicate this is a piece of information that I'm going to pipe in from somewhere else. Now they're called variables. Uh, but these are variables that are created within your type form as opposed to, again, the hidden variables that can bring in information from somewhere else. So I put the cursor where I want that information to come and I come up here to add a variable. Well, the only thing I have so far is their name. So I'm going to click that. Great. And so it'll say thanks, name, and what's your email address? Good. Now there's an interesting thing about piping and making questions required. If you're going to use the piped information in a later one, then you probably want to make sure you have it. So you might want to require it. On the other hand, if you don't get the information, you'll just kind of leave it blank act like it wasn't there. But that in case it'll say thanks, comma, space, period. What's your email address? It'll look silly. It's up to you whether you want to require these things. Again, the rule of thumb is the less you require the better. But for the sake of piping, sometimes you want that I'm not going to do it right now because this is just an example. That's a decision that you get to make when you're creating your own forms. I'll hit save. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some other information. I'm going to ask for a date this time I haven't used that example very often, I'm going to bring that over here, put it underneath. Oops, sorry, that didn't work well. There we go. And I'm going to ask another question. Alright, I'm going to paste in my text that I copied somewhere else. And I'm going to take this one where I have email written. And that's where I replace the information that I got from their email address in the last one. So now I click on variable, and you see now I have two possible things. It's the second question. Now it would be really nice if it let me know if I could get that to say email instead, but you know, there it is. And for this particular example, I'm going to ask about birthdays because I'm going to make like I'm ordering a cake for them. And I personally like to use the dot separator, but you know, of course, use whatever you want. I'll hit save. And let's take a quick look right here. Again, we have this in the double curly brackets, we have answer underscore and then this long code to indicate that it's the variable in this form that goes in there. And it's kind of cryptic, it's hard to tell exactly what it's referring to, but you get to see it more clearly when you're in the creation window. So I've got a person's name, I've got their email address, and I've asked them for their birthday. So I have three pieces of information I can work with. Then I'm going to add a multiple choice question. So let me come up here and drag this down. And again, the point here is I'm having lots of different question types. Question I'm going to ask now says, great, we'll make sure to sing you a song on the date. 
So in each of these examples, the stem of the question includes a piece of information from the previous one. And it's just the last one I had right here. By the way, what kind of cake do you like? Now, I just want to mention in case you haven't noticed, this is starting to feel a lot less like a survey and a lot more like a chat bot, which is a sort of natural language way of interacting with programs. It's a very big area of growth and Typeform lets you do that without any of the heavy programming, but recreate some of the experience of back and forth. That's one of its great advantages. I'm going to come down here and list a couple of choices. I actually looked up what are the most common, well, wedding cake flavors. And these were a few of them, chocolate and vanilla and lemon and carrot. And I forgot this one entirely. I had to be reminded red velvet. And then I'm going to put an other. Oh, actually, sorry. I don't put other right there. I ignore that. So I've got my five here. And then I'm not going to put in multiple selections, but I am going to randomize it. And I'm going to put the other right here. And you know what? We've got six options. They go in a nice little matrix. Otherwise, I could force vertical alignment like that. But I think this looks a little better the way it was. And so I'm going to hit save. And now I've got that piece of information, multiple choice, and they check one of the answers. As a way of following up on that, let me get a little yes, no question. This is this one's kind of a, a reach, but it's fine. I'm just going to get a yes, no, like I'm confirming something. So I'm going to say, so you said you like, and then I'm going to put the choice from my most recent. So you said you like this one best, right? And all they do is put yes, no, that's, that's easy. Now we're going to get a rating. I'm going to drag the rating over. And this one, I actually am going to follow up with the yes, no. In fact, this one's going to be a little different because I'm going to pipe in two pieces of information. The first one is the yes, no, and I expect people to say yes. But I'm going to bring that in. And I'm going to get the answer from this question. That's going to be their yes, no. And then I'm also going to ask them exactly how much do you like that particular choice. So I'm going to bring that one in. And I just have to remember to go to the previous question. And again, I have to know that question number four is the one that asks about what cake they like. And then from there, I can say, let's put down to five stars and let's put, um, let's put thumbs up just because, you know, we can. All right. And then I'm going to finish this. I've got a lot of information here, and I'm just going to finish with a statement. So I'll bring that one down here. And again, a statement doesn't ask for any new information. I'll bring this up top, and I'll paste in my statement. It says, that's enough for now. I am going to pipe in their name. I'm going to take that out, and I happen to know that that is from the first question. Hopefully you see how piping can give continuity and humanity to your questions. Good luck and happy birthday eventually. I'll hit save. And so now we have this one that does look really kind of cryptic because it has this fancy code inside it. But let's view the type form and see how it plays out. All right, we've got my little welcome screen here. We're going to hit start. What's your first name? Uh, my name is still Bart. What's your email address? Well, let's say this. I'm going to hello at datalab.cc. That will get you to datalab. What is your birthday? Let's say my birthday is 0171981. Oops, excuse me. 1981. There we go. It's actually not my birthday. But it says here, we'll make sure to sing you a song on this day. Now, really, I, I did make one error here. It pipes in the year too. I should say on the anniversary of, it would be nice to have just the month and the day. But anyhow, you did see that I was able to pipe in a date. There are other situations in which you would want to repeat that, like when do you want this delivered? 
By the way, what kind of cake do you like? Well, I like chocolate, so I'm gonna hit B for chocolate. You said you like chocolate best, right? I'm gonna say yes. And why? How much do you like chocolate? A lot, I'm gonna give it five. And that's enough for now, Bart. And so I've created my own little chat bot on the cheap in type form by taking information from each question and just running it through like you have in a conversation where each new question is a response to the previous piece of information. It feels more like a conversation that way. And that's one of the great advantages of using Typeform and of incorporating piping whenever it makes sense.